Welcome to iLecture Online and even though we've seen a few examples of this again now we're going to go through the theory a little bit more and try to relate it to independent events and dependent events in the case of conditional probability. So what we're doing here is so looking at conditional probability with independent events. So there's two events. We're going to toss a die twice. The sample space of course all the numbers on the die and the first toss the event is a number less than six the second event is an odd number. So here what we're trying to find is the probability of A1 intersecting with A2. But a better way to look at it is the probability that event 1 and event 2 will, or A1 and A2 will occur. So let's use the word and here. And so the probability that event A1 and event A2 will occur, and it's equal to the probability that event A1 will occur, multiply times the probability that A2 will occur dependent on event A1. Now here, where this came from, what came from the dependent formula, the probability that A2 will occur, and taking into account that A1 has occurred, is equal to the probability of A1 and A2 divided by the probability of A1. Now what's a little bit different here is that the probability of A2 dependent upon uh, event A1 having occurred may not really have a dependence. So let's take a look at the example right here. We're going to toss the die twice. So what is the probability that the first event has occurred and the first event is a number less than 6 so that's the probability is 5 divided by 6 in this case. So this would be equal to 5 divided by 6. Now we're going to multiply that times the probability that event 2 will occur but it depends upon event A1 having occurred. But the fact that we toss it a second time and that we're looking for an odd number has really nothing to do with what happened on the first toss. It's completely independent on the first event. So therefore, A2 will go on irregardless of A1, what has happened in A1. And so therefore, the probability of A2 occurring is simply these three numbers divided by the sample space. So this will simply be 3 divided by 6. And so therefore, the probability of the first event occurring and the second event occurring is simply the product of the two probabilities, which is 15 divided by 36. I think we could simplify that because 15 divided by 3 is 5 and 36 divided by 3 is 12. So that's the probability. So here you can see that the two events are completely independent of one another and therefore we can simply ignore what happened in the first event when we try to find the probability of the second event. And that's what we mean by independent events and the conditional probability. Now what we'll see in the future is we'll see some more examples where something will happen in the first event that will affect the way we look at the probability of the second event. Even though the events are independent, it will still affect the second event and we'll see an example of that in the next video.